So for required practical number five, you'll be investigating the effect of pH on the rate of reaction of amylase enzyme. So you will have set up your heating apparatus as so. You'll have a beaker of water. I want you to take your thermometer and place it in your beaker of water. And then I want you to turn your Bunsen burner from safety to roaring flame to heat your water until it reaches 30 degrees C. That won't take very long. Remove your Bunsen burner, leave it to one side on a safety flame in case you need to top up the heat during your practical. So if we come over to the tray that you will have in between your pairs, you'll have two spotting tails, take those out and I want you to place a drop of iodine solution into each well of a spotting tail. I'm just going to do the one for demonstration purposes but I want you to fill both of your spotting tiles ready. Okay. Then what I want you to do is to go over to the water bath and take out your first pH buffer solution. I'm going to take pH nine over to your water bath and place that in to reach 30 degrees C. You will also have a test tube rack, which will have some amylase enzyme solution and some starch solution. I'm going to take both of those and place them again into your 30 degree water bath. Um, leave them for a minute or so to reach 30 degrees. Now take from your tray the experiment test tube, which is empty, um, and place that alongside your other solutions. Now what I want you to do is to start adding certain things to your experiment tube. So take your glass rod ready, leave that next to your spotting tiles, take a beaker of water ready, a stop clock ready and a tissue, hold that in your hand ready as well. So the aim of this is to take your buffer solution first, two centimetres cubed, so you've got to get really close to your pipette and find your two centimetre mark and empty your pipette until you get there and then transfer to your experiment tube. I want you to take your amylase solution and do the same again, two centimetres cubed into your experiment tube. Now it's important you do add amylase straight after your buffer and not the starch first, think about why. So there's my amylase. And then we're going to get two centimetres cubed of starch ready and with my other hand, as soon as this goes in, I'm going to start the stop clock. So are we ready? Straight in, stop clock starts. And then get your glass rod and give your experiment tube a little mix. Now we're waiting for 30 seconds on the stop clock. And once we get 30 seconds, we're going to take a drop on the end of my glass rod and put it into the first well of a spotting tile. Now if starch is still present, it will turn blue-black and if starch has been fully broken down by amylase, it will remain yellow. So remove one drop from your experiment tube using your glass rod at 30 seconds and place into the first well of the spotting tile. Rinse in water, dry ready for the next 30 seconds when you'll pick up another drop from your experiment tube. So we've got 10 more seconds to wait. Give it a mix in between. So when we get to one minute now, I'll remove another drop into the second well of the spotting tile. Again, you'll rinse with water and keep repeating this process until you don't see a colour change anymore and it remains this orangey yellow. So you'll see that I've finished the experiment now for pH 9. We don't have any more colour change in our fifth well when we place the drop from the experiment tube. So we add up now all the other wells. So 30 seconds, add 30 seconds, we're at 60, 90, 120 seconds it took before all the starch was fully broken down. So for pH 9, we'd write in our results table 120 seconds. Then we would take our pH 9 tube, replace it back in our water bath and repeat for other pHs.